I first attended SBID, um, one of the conferences in the early 90s. Um, there are some obvious differences in the way the meeting is run. I mean, posters were really posters. They were made of paper as opposed to electronically on a screen. But I guess a number of things have happened in our field that have changed dramatically. Um, I regularly prescribe drugs that I certainly never heard of and never had been created, not just antibiotics, antibiotics, but also immunomodulatory drugs. So there are a number of conditions now that we can treat effectively that we wouldn't have been able to do um, in those years back. There are also much better ways that we can diagnose infectious diseases. And perhaps the biggest change has been the emphasis towards evidence-based medicine. And it's rare that we don't um, look at the evidence before we start treating a patient or as we're starting treating a patient and ensure that we're giving um, the best treatment uh, according to the best evidence that exists. And, and the ability to seek that evidence so easily now, of course, with the internet and easily accessibility of um, not just the information, but the ease of access to experts throughout the world through the SBID community. Two of the greatest challenges that face us as infectious disease physicians are things that really are a challenge for us um, across the planet. The first is, of course, antimicrobial resistance. And although we have a number of antimicrobial uh, stewardship um, strategies now, I think they need to go a lot further if we're really going to stay ahead of um, bacteria, if, the, if we want to keep one step ahead of resistance. And the second, of course, is climate change, because this is really going to change the ecology of many parasites across the world, the obvious ones being malaria and Japanese encephalitis. And of course, the, this also influences the um, chances of the next pandemic. And we've obviously seen what can happen so quickly with, with COVID, um, but we have to keep our eye on the ball and make sure that we have the systems not only to detect early in the next pandemic, but to have learned the lessons from this pandemic um, so that when the next one occurs, that we don't harm children in the same way that we have done with the management. In it's really important that we have better surveillance methods. Um, we need to, in um, we've seen, we've, in SARS-CoV-2, we very quickly had to scale up our ability to diagnose the infection. But we really need to kind of keep that infrastructure in place so that when we need it next time, it's immediately available without having to ramp it up. I think once this pandemic completely tails off, it's easy to us to forget about it and not realize that the next one could really just be right around the corner.